The leader of the Democratic Alliance, Musi Maimane, is a man under pressure. He's been accused of refusing to return a car donated to the DA by Steinhoff and living a lavish life in a rented house in Cape Town. And more recently, there have been calls from outside of the party for him to resign. But he says that these allegations are part of a smear campaign against him. One thing that's for certain is that infighting is happening within the DA. We're now joined by Musi Maimane to talk about these and a few other issues. Mr. Maimane, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Well, let's begin with the most recent issue. Are you under pressure to resign and will you resign as DA leader? No, I'm focused on a project I started in the DA. South Africans uh, place confidence in me to continue the work that we're doing of building One South Africa for All, a party that represents all citizens. The party itself and leaders within the party say they're well behind that particular vision and those objectives. And therefore, I feel confident that we need to go ahead and we need to press on with that project. And so people from the outside can make all the calls they want. Um, at this stage in time, I'm focused on that cause, on that project. You've mentioned a, a smear campaign being run against you, but you've been scant on detail. Who's behind it? Well, I think more than anything, I have always recognized that there'd be a few who are in the absolute minority who within the party will resist that change, resist that project of change. And that's why I opposed even the idea of establishing a 1959 committee inside the, the parliamentary caucus because you don't need factions and fractions within the party. You need one group of people working together. And some of them have come out in public and have been raising these issues. I certainly will not shy away from that. I remain resolute with the majority of the people inside the DA and say we chart our way forward and this is the way we're going to go. Well, you said that they're a minority, but uh, I think it's accepted that they have some influence within the party. Um, and to put it bluntly, do you believe that at this point as the DA leader, the knives are out for you? In any political project, you are going to have enemies. Otherwise, you are not changing the organization. If you want everybody in the organization to be happy, then you must give them ice cream. But if you actually want change, you must realize that there'll be some people who oppose that change. You must realize that there'll be some people who want to challenge you. But the fact that they want to go out in public and put out disinformation that is not true to damage me tells me that, in fact, internally, they don't always have the numbers. In these, on these two issues of the car and the house, you believe you've done anything wrong? I have broken no law in this country. There have been no charge against me in this regard. And therefore, I stand by those. These two issues, along with the performance of the Democratic Alliance at the 2019 elections, are bound to feature at the Federal Council on the 18th of October. Are you ready for a fight in, in anticipating uh, an attack on you and a possible move to get you out? Or do you believe that uh, that won't happen? As important as those issues are for the party to get clarity on, they are small in contrast to the bigger struggle. The struggle for this country is not whether my money lives here or drives that car. The struggle here is whether the DA can go forward and build this one South Africa for all. That's the fight. But can the DA do that with Mr. Maimane at the helm if in the last election under your leadership you have shed just over 2% of its support? And would your detractors in that council meeting not be able to use the election performance as a basis to question your leadership and potentially ask for you to be removed? Of course all leaders face challenges when parties lose votes. But if you recognize the fact that this is a collective struggle, this is in fact a fight for non-racialism in the country, will it always go forward? Sometimes it goes backwards. Sometimes we will face some challenges, but we must dare never surrender. We must go forward, we must fight. And even if it means there are people who oppose that, where, from wherever they may come from, you must be willing to stand up to them because it's that important.